So now we talk a little bit more in detail about what legacies are and what they can potentially be. One of the things I had mentioned is the immediate impact of the event, the temporarity of the three weeks the Olympics are staged in Sochi and what this means. So for example, when we saw the opening ceremony, there are a few things that really stood out, being them positive or negative. The negative ones, for example, was the ring that didn't light up. The positive ones was the amazing performance of the ballet, the war and peace. So these are temporary legacies that will remain with us and with Sochi for years to come. Then you can look at other legacies that are particularly important for the host. One of them, for example, is economic activity. Now, for about 10 years, meaning starting before the bid, then once you get awarded the, um, the right to host, until about a year after the event in itself, you see an increase in economic activity. However, that economic activity is primarily in the construction sectors and drops very quickly after the event is over. Then, of course, we have the legacy of global recognition. Everybody knows now where Sochi is. Everybody knows about the Russians that wanted to stage the perfect games and use this, these games to transform a usually summer resort also into a winter resort and make it the destination for winter sports in Russia. Other legacies include, for example, transportation. When you look at the airport in Sochi, it had to be widened and broadened enough to welcome hundreds of thousands of visitors, which is not likely to happen after the games are over. Then you have the highway connecting the mountain and the coastal cluster. This also is being built to a capacity to serve the Olympic Games, yet after the games are really 300,000 people using this highway to the extent it is now built for. Then also we have the potential oversupply of hotel space that was created to accommodate the athletes, created to accommodate the media, created to accommodate visitors. Now once these leave, how much is oversupplied? How much was oversupplied? A lot of the times, mega events are seen as a means to an end rather than planning for it in terms of just being a one-time thing. So now there's good plans and bad plans. If you look at, for example, the Rio 2016 games, the pressure to perform on time is overtaking the city. That legacy became less and less of importance for the city, but rather the focus remained on staging a perfect Olympic Games. Then again, you look at the basically the discrepancy between what the Olympic Games demand from a city and what the host needs to stage. And then that discrepancy is basically where a well-planned legacy pans out incredibly well. So I just talked about the discrepancy between what the Olympics demand and what the host city actually needs. And then that discrepancy is basically looking at do the Olympic Games distort the plan of a host city or do they catalyze it? Do they bring up front important projects that are necessary for the population? In that planning discrepancy, most of the time, cities that invest before the bid, most of the money, plan long term. Let's say, for example, Barcelona planned about 25 years before they actually staged the Olympic Games. These cities have traditionally reaped the most benefits. One other example of legacies is the maintenance cost that has to be brought up or staged every time or every year. Um, for the venue in itself. As an example, the bird's nest in Beijing right now costs 11 million each year, yet it's not used at all. So these are the types of legacies we want to avoid.